For as long as she can recall, Melbourne's spoken word artist Fleecy Malay has had trouble recognising the faces of even her closest friends. I remember when I was in my late teenage years, I just kind of began to believe that I was either really stupid on some level, like some part of my brain didn't work and I was a bit stupid, or that, um, that I was really self-obsessed. And as someone who's very outgoing, I'm a performer, I'm out there, that's a story that I get told, you get told a lot when you're a kid, like, oh, you always want to be the centre of attention. So it just kind of fed into this idea that I was so consumed with myself that I couldn't even remember other people's faces. And, um, and it, it really played, played into my self-worth. So I often just didn't let on that I didn't recognise who they were and I would just kind of pretend that I knew who they were and I'd be having conversations. And while I was having the conversation, like 20% of my mind would be listening to what they were saying and engaging in the conversation and the rest of my brain is scanning and trying to work out who they are. So I think I would really lose out on genuine connection in those moments and genuine feelings of closeness with people because I was basically pretending the whole time. Throughout her 20s, Fleecy did all that she could to avoid social embarrassment. But it took an awkward moment for her to finally discover the root of her problems. I was sat at a table in a restaurant with a group of friends and some people that I didn't know. And I turned to the person next to me and I said, hi, I'm Fleecy. And she went, Fleecy, you do realise that that's the 13th time this week that you have introduced yourself to me. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I just, I don't know why. I just really struggle to recognise people. I'm really sorry. And um, a few hours later, I was sitting next to her and she said, you know, I have this friend who has this condition called face blindness. Face blindness, or prosopagnosia, is a neurological disorder where the parts of the brain responsible for face perception are impaired. The word prosop means face in Greek and agnosia means ignorance. So it's face ignorance is the word itself. And um, it's related to facial recognition, which is a spectrum. So you get, at one end, you get super recognisers, people that just remember every single face they've ever met in their entire life. And then at the other end, you get extreme prosopagnosia, which is people who can't recognise their own face in a mirror or their parents' faces and people like that. If that's the scale, I'm kind of 80% way along that scale is kind of how I put myself. I'm not an extreme prosopagnosia, but there are people who are very close to me whose faces I still don't recognise, especially out of context. When people hear the term face blind. I think people think that I literally can't see faces, uh, which kind of feels absurd to me because I can see faces. I can see your eyes, I can see your nose, I can see your mouth, but I might look at your face and I can't relate a memory of a person that goes with that face. It just feels like a face. It doesn't have any personality connected to it unless I get prompted. And then once I'm prompted about who that person is, it's like, it's like it comes into focus or like two pieces kind of joined together and I get to see the whole person. Since finding out about her face blindness, Fleecy has had a new lease on life. It took this, this sense that I'd had in myself that I was innately a bad person because I couldn't remember people or an innately stupid person because I couldn't remember people and suddenly just made me a person with something that I struggle with because of my brain. And it made, took away all the shame. And so I started to just tell people when I met them. I'd say, hey, just so you know, we're having this great conversation right now. I have this condition, which means if you see me in the future, I might not know who you are. It's pretty scary, it's pretty gross. It's given me a real gift. It's given me the gift of kind of forcing me into radical honesty. Like I can't, I've learnt that not being honest to people doesn't create connection and it leaves you feeling lonely. And one of the things I think I admire about myself the most or the part of myself I love the most is how committed I am to honesty. And that goes hand in hand with what I've had to do with this condition, yeah. <laughs>